What is up everybody? It's Nick from Mining Office and today I get to bring you guys one of my favorite kinds of videos. We're going to be checking out the new T-Rex Miner version 24.6 for the increased LHR unlock. So like I said, I love doing these types of videos. We're going to be testing it out on most of the 30 series cards today. And we're going to be trying to find out if T-Rex is still king or does NB Miner have the upper hand. So I tested NB Miner out a little bit. I'll link to that video if you guys want. I've already started testing this, so I'm going to give you a little bit of insight, a little bit of spoilers, and then you guys can check the rest of the video if you want all the details on the hash rates and stuff like that, all right? So first of all, we're going to be testing this on a 3080, three different 3060 Ti's, a 3070, and a 3070 Ti, okay? So all these are light hash rate cards that we'll be testing this on, and I'll tell you right now, it's a net upgrade over the last version of T-Rex, so I do get more hash rate out of all of these cards than before, and we'll go into those details in a second. What I'll do at the end of the video is have an Excel sheet with the breakdown of, let's say, dual mining versus Ravencoin versus Ethereum unlocks. Uh, I'll also give you this scoop ahead of time, dual mining specifically for ETH and Ravencoin together versus just this ETH unlock, for me, it's more profitable doing the dual mining. So this is a good step if you know your cards don't have that 10 gigabytes of VRAM required to dual mine ETH and Raven or even Firo and Raven. But yeah, so on my 3080 and 3060, I'm sticking to the dual mining and you guys will find out, stay tuned and see what I'm doing with the rest of my LHR cards now because you know I'm a big fan of Ravencoin, but some things have changed. So let's get on to checking the first 3060 Ti I have, which is in my gaming PC here. So let's look at that uh, right after checking the GitHub release notes, of course. So let's switch over to the PC. I just wanted to take 15 seconds to mention that we now have mining office merch on crypti.co. You see they offer a variety of different crypto products and merch associated to those cryptocurrencies. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you can go now to the mining office section. See there's different designs for different items and there are also various colors available for these items. So if ever you're interested, uh, you can pick up something to support the channel. And there's also a 10% off coupon uh, that you can use. I'll put that in the description. It is mining office 10. All right, getting on to the GitHub, you'll see they just released another version actually 17 hours ago from when I'm filming this, 24.7, but really it doesn't change very much, uh, just some web, web UI stuff and gives a little notice for Hive OS users. But you wanna go down to 0.24.6, I mean, you can download this version. I've been doing my testing with this one and this is where the big changes were brought. So let's look at these release notes. You'll see for ETH hash, improve LHR unlocker. The LHR tune value increased from 71 to 74 by default. They say the scale is somewhat different. So basically remove your previous arguments and let your cards find their new LHR tune value uh, automatically with the T-Rex miner, right? Um, the other big thing I would say they added is the ability to dual mine ETH and Firo together using basically the exact same settings as ETH and Raven. So that's also cool because you don't have to go setting the overclocks again and retuning all your stuff. You can just, you know, change your Firo address and uh, the algo in your batch file and you're good to go. That's really all of interest in the release notes. Let's get to the testing, uh, more the results because I've started the testing, but the results are impressive. So let's check the 3060 Ti in my gaming PC. If I'm being honest, the 3060 Ti seem to have the biggest improvement in unlock, be it NB miner or T-Rex miner. So that's what impresses me the most. Let's take a look. So this EVGA card has Samsung memory and it's getting between 45 and 46 mega hash at 130 watts. That's what I was able to tune it to. You can see that efficiency, 344 kilohash per watt. That's really good for a 3060 Ti. The hash rate bounces around a little bit like with any LHR unlock, but yeah, it's, it's pretty consistent between 45 and 46 mega hash. So this card I think is pretty good in terms of silicon lottery. Uh, let's go check the two other 3060 Ti's, but uh, compare it to 29 mega hash at 160 watts for Ravencoin, okay, Kapow. This is obviously gonna be more profitable. I'm gonna tell you that right now, but like I said, at the end, we'll check out all the profitabilities in the Excel sheet and on what to mine uh, to compare. But let's get over to the rig and check out the two other 3060 Ti's I have. I will also share the overclocks at the end of the video in the Excel sheet as well. So you can skip to that or wait for it if you want. I'll just show that both of these cards are Hynix memory, all right, on the Asus card and the Zotac card. So for these two cards, the performance is quite similar. 
They underperform slightly compared to the other card, but that is just because of the Hynix memory, I think. Uh, you can see they bounce around between 44 and 45 and a half mega hash. Uh, so they're not losing out by much. And if you look at that efficiency, it's right around that 340 kilohash per watt mark as well. Um, I'll just mention these seem to pull a little bit more power by about 5 watts. The Zotac card, its power bounces a little bit between 128 watts and 135. Uh, but no matter, that's still really, really good performance. I'm impressed by the gains on the 3060 Ti's. So if you look at the uptime on this miner, you'll see it's one day, one hour, and 38 minutes. So yeah, I've switched my 3060 Ti's to Ethereum, officially from Ravencoin. So that's how good this update is. So uh, let's go to the next card. I think we'll check out the RTX 3080. So let's take a look at that. And uh, for this bad boy, it'll be up against the dual mining and Ravencoin. So for the 3080, right off the bat, this is the card I compared with for NB miner and I did not get the performance I wanted on that unlock, and this one seems to deliver. You can see the efficiency is not great compared to the 3060 Ti's, but it's still pushing out a lot of mega hash, so again, it bounces between 73.5 and, and 75.5 and mega hash, and only pulls about 236 watts, so that's not bad. Again, it's pretty good. It's unlocked at LHR 74. Again, look, it's been up for 19 hours, no rejected shares, this unlock seems to be very stable so far from my testing. Uh, yes, the hash rate does vary, but again, that seems to be normal and it's, it's, a, it's across the board with all the miners. So again, this is good performance, but I think I'm going back to dual mining, so stay tuned for the end for that. But uh, yeah, I'm dual mining where I can. This is, this is still really good for all you ETH bulls, but dual mining's where it's at for me. So I think next we'll check on the improvement on the 3070. So this light hash rate 3070, I've been mining straight Ethereum on it's the only light hash rate card I have that I've been mining straight ethereum on so we'll be able to compare directly to what I was getting before so again I already have it mining um, on the new unlock I set it at the same time as all my other cards and I get a flat gain so let me show you that the Asus 3070 has Samsung memory and again really happy on the performance I would say just comparing to the previous T-Rex miner uh, which is 24.4 or 24.5, whatever you were running, I get a flat increase of one to two mega hash. So before I was around 340, 350 efficiency. The efficiency is now 389 kilohash per watt. That's really good. And we're pushing between 45 and 46 and a half mega hash. So yeah, again, really happy. This card, I was already mining ETH. So I will take a flat gain wherever I can get it, right? A free flat gain for the same power. And actually, I didn't even try tuning down the power. Maybe I can shave off five or 10 watts. So I would be surprised, but you never know. You never know. So again, only positive results so far. Uh, I think the last thing we have to test more or less is going to be this 3070 Ti. It's the only card I still have mining Ravencoin, so I'm actually going to tune it for the first time. I've never mined ETH on a 3070 Ti, and I'll see what I can get out of it. We'll compare the efficiencies. At the end of the day, that's what I kind of like the most is the efficiency, seeing where we're at. If it's getting under 300 kilohash per watt, I I'm not going to run it on, on Ethereum. So uh, yeah, let's check it out. All right, so I tuned my 3070 Ti, and in terms of hash rate, it gets a solid 61, 61 and a half mega hash. So it's similar to the performance of a 3070 in terms of output. And the efficiency, I got it to about 335 uh, kilohash per watt, which again is pretty good. Pretty good, 185 watts the card is pulling. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested on this guy once I plug it into what to mine. It gets 41 mega hash on Raven. Uh, at 200, I think 25 watts or 230 watts. So I'm curious to compare, but again, the T-Rex miner is delivering on all the cards. It's running on LHR 74 here. And uh, yeah, you guys can see here, 62 mega hash, 60.7 mega hash. I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, I haven't been running it too long. You can, you can see 37 minutes, but 35 on 35 shares. So yeah, I don't know. I might, I might make this card run on Ethereum 2 and uh, only have my cards dual mining. Anyway, let's, uh, let's jump over to my computer. We're gonna be doing a comparison on Excel. We're gonna be plugging in everything on what to mine for ETH, Raven, and dual mining on the 3080, and we'll see what's most profitable. All right, so I just wanna say that we're doing this, obviously calculating with today's prices. So this is Canadian dollars, Today, Ethereum is $5,868. For reference, uh, I'll just show you the graph quickly here. So this is where we're at. 
And for Ravencoin, we're at 16 cents. So 16.41 cents. Again, all, always Canadian dollars. And this is what the price chart looks like for Ravencoin. So the second thing I want to say before we get into it any further is I'm calculating everything with an electric cost of $0.09 dollars per kilowatt hour. And again, everything in Canadian dollars. It's the last time I'm going to say it. The first comparison we're going to be looking at is 3060 Ti. We're going to be going in the order we looked at and we're going to be skipping the 3070 just because I only upgraded the T-Rex miner and I've just I've been mining Ethereum on it anyway. So for the 3060 Ti, for Kapow, uh, I'm using more the EVGA card as an example but they're all very similar. So we're getting about 28 and a half, 29 mega hash on Kapow at 160 watts and ETH hash I put 45.5 mega hash at 132 watts because this card gets 130 but the other ones on the rig get 135 so I figured I would average it out. If we look at the results you can see Ethereum is more profitable by 20 cents versus Ravencoin now with this LHR unlock on the 3060 Ti so that's like 7% or something like that uh, more profitable so I've switched all my 3060 Ti's all three of them over to Ethereum for the time being. Of course this changes on the daily so if the price of ETH goes down and the price of Ravencoin goes up well, it might not be more profitable all of a sudden to mine ETH, but that's how this game is. So, on to the 3080. Since this bad boy has more than 10 gigabytes of VRAM, well, it has 10, but you know what I mean, and it can do the dual mining, we'll first compare ETH, Raven, and then we'll compare the dual mining. So, for Kapow, this card gets 48 mega hash at 278 watts, and ETH hash, we're pulling about 74 mega hash for 200 37 watts so if i calculate that and we look at the results you'll see that they are pretty close they're pretty close but again ethereum wins out when you're solo mining it's not bad more profitable mining ethereum but let's see what the dual mining gives so what i did for the dual mining is again it fluctuates so it's a little harder to get a true reading you kind of have to look pool side to get a better reading but I put all the power on ETH hash, it, it doesn't really matter. So the 237 watts that it takes to dual mine, I get about 38 mega hash on ETH and 23 mega hash on Kapow. You can see that our total profit, right? We're gonna have to add 247 here to our Raven coin, which is 271. And that gives us $5.18 profit. So when you compare here, you can see that Ethereum, again, seems to be more profitable than even the dual mining on the 3080. But let me tell you something, when I checked this yesterday, it wasn't the case. And the 3080 dual mining was actually more profitable. Like I said, it changes day to day. And when I can dual mine, well, I prefer getting that diversity in while I'm mining, right? I'm getting payouts then for ETH and Raven. So to me, look, when you can do that, go with the dual mining. But if not, all the profitabilities, at least on the 3080, are neck and neck. So pick your poison. Pick whatever you want and whichever you feel like mining more, go for it. So the last one we're going to check out here is the 3070 Ti. This guy does 41 mega hash on Kapow at 247 watts. And like we just tested before on ETH hash, we get about 61 and a half mega hash at 184 watts. Again, with a 0.09 electric rate, we calculate that and... Again, it's, it's neck and neck. So you can see here, um, it's, it's actually putting them in order of revenue and not calculating electricity in here. But Ethereum is more profitable on the 3070 Ti today by 13 cents. All right. So again, both neck and neck. That seems to be the story. So with the current profitabilities, T-Rex Miner really brings up the ETH profitability to be the same as Ravencoin, at least. I won't say other altcoins, but raven coin so that's really good we're up to par and now let's say we get an 80 percent unlock we're in the green so that's really 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 good i have belief that we'll eventually get a hundred percent unlock and then those lhr cards won't be so bad guys all right i hope you guys like the trusty excel sheet we'll just compare quickly i'm not going to go through every column and row in detail uh, you guys are very welcome to pause it take a screenshot for your reference Again, this is using T-Rex 24.6. It should be applicable to 24.7, and it's using an electric rate of $0.09 CAD, everything in CAD here. So starting with the 3060 Ti, you see I have my three cards here, two with Hynix memory and one with Samsung memory. For the Raven profitability, 
I put a range of hash rates here, which is actually realistic. So you can see the difference in efficiency and difference in Raven profits you can get depending on your card's performance. And then if we're looking at ETH, they all seem to be closer together. The, the Samsung memory performed slightly better than the Hynix, but not by too, too much. It was more by the power draw. Anyway, that made them slightly less efficient. But since Ethereum doesn't take that much power, it really didn't cut into the profits much. So yeah, on the 3060 Ti, right now, it seems like the clear way to go is definitely mining Ethereum. So like I said, I switched all my 3060 Ti's to Ethereum for the time being. If we go over to the 3070, I went back in my video, I'll link it to the 3070 when I did the unboxing and testing, and I plugged in the Ravencoin uh, numbers I got, and that gave a $3.29 profit. And comparing to ETH, which I'm getting 46 and a half at 119 watts, which again, I'm gaining by about 10 cents. So it's close, but ETH is more profitable. Switching over to the 3070 Ti, again, uh, everything that has GDDR6X memory is Micron. Uh, and we were getting 41 mega hash at 247 watts. That gives a profitability of $4.30. And for Ethereum, we're getting a profitability of $4.43. So again, Every card, guys, it's, it's, I think you can see it. It's all really, really close now. So I'm very thankful for this T-Rex update. Uh, it's really good. Quickly, we'll go to the 3080. This is the only one where you can actually dual mine because I didn't test the 3060s in this video. Once again, the same story repeats itself. You can read the numbers yourself. Uh, ETH is the most profitable compared to Ravencoin and even when compared to dual mining. However, the thing is, I think dual mining is still a bit better because you're getting that diversity. And don't forget, there's the Raven halving coming up. So it's not bad to have a bag of Raven sitting on the side and, you know, basically, Basically, by doing this and dual mining, it's another way of DCAing or dollar cost averaging into Ravencoin. My recommendation to you, if you have 3060s or 3080s, make them dual mine. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going to be putting my 3060 Ti's, 3070s for sure are going to be on Ethereum. And the only one I'm really not too sure about is the 3070 Ti. I'll have to see. Yeah, I'll see what I'm going to do. But I think that's it for the analysis. All right, I really hope you enjoyed my testing of the new T-Rex miner on all these different cards. If you did, hit that like button and maybe subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. I always test all the new miners when they come out, so you can look forward to that. And in my opinion, T-Rex is still king. Mining Ethereum on LHR cards is definitely more profitable than mining straight Raven. However, dual mining, in my opinion, is still well worth it on cards that can. So 3080s and 3060s, I am personally dual mining, but if not, I've switched over all of my cards to Ethereum. So that's it, everyone. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all next time.